Welcome back to another retouching video guys. In this video, I will walk you through the process of retouching this image from this look to this look in four important steps. Before we actually begin, let's break the steps down. In the first step, I will show you how to heal the image. By healing, I mean we will be able to clean up the image and remove the dark spots from the image. Then in the second step, I will show you how to boost the colors and make the colors pop or more saturated. Then we will also learn how to add the shadows and highlight to give dimensioning to the face and body. In step 3, I will show you how to dodge the eyes. And in the final part, I will show you how to add texture to the whole retouching. Let's get started. On the layers panel, let's press Ctrl plus J to add one copy of the existing layer. Let's hide the background and rename this one to healing. I will select the spot healing brush tool. And then gradually begin to paint all these bumps to remove them. Now, for some potions like this potion right here, I'm going to use the patch tool. So I'll come over here and grab the patch tool. Then on the options bar, I'll choose destination. <laughs> by choosing destination, I can now sample this potion by creating a lasso selection around it and then hover inside, simply drag it here to replace that potion with the selection. With the healing layer selected, let's add two copies of it by pressing Ctrl plus J twice. I'll right click on the texture layer and convert it to a smart object. Then I'll invert it by pressing Ctrl plus I, that's Command I on the Mac. After that, I'll change its blending mode to Vivid Light. The reason we are converting this layer into a smart object is so that any filter that we add to it, we can always come back and modify it. The first filter I'm going to add is Gaussian Blur. A radius of 1.7 works just fine, but based on your image, you might need to reduce or increase this radius. I'll click OK. Then the next filter I'm going to add is High Pass. And again, this is photo sensitive. In my image, 25 works just fine, but in your image, you might need to reduce this down. I'll leave it to 25 or click OK. If I click on this down pointing arrow to review the smart filters, you can see that they have a max attached to it. This max control all these layers, but we will not be using the max today. I'll collapse it and then hold the Alt key. That will be the option key on the Mac. With the Alt key down, I'll simply click on the camera icon here to add an inverted max instantly. The inverted max is black, which means it is covering all the effects that we have added or all the filters that have been applied. Now, grab the brush tool and choose a soft round brush. You can lift the opacity to 100%, but I always recommend you reduce the flow. I'll take the flow to like 12%. By reducing the flow, it gives you the possibility to paint several times before you actually see the effect or the desired result that you want. I'll then make sure that the foreground color is set to white. And with the max here selected, let me right click here and choose slash thumbnail so that you can see. With this max selected, not the thumbnail, the max here, make sure it is selected. With a soft round brush, I will begin to paint to even out the colors. After evening out the skin tones, let us now boost the colors by increasing its saturation because the image looks desaturated. To do that, I'll simply click on the new adjustment layer icon here and add hue saturation. I'll increase its saturation to a very nice value. I think 24 is okay, so I'll input 24 here. I'll shift click here and put everything here in a group and I'll rename it 
despite all the work we have done the image still look flat okay so let's add some depth or dimensioning to the whole body and face there are many ways of doing that some people would like to use the dodge and bird tool from here but my preferred way is by using the curves adjustment layer i'll choose curves adjustment layer from here then i'll grab the target hand icon here now i'll just click anywhere in the image and when i get the little hand there i just drag it up to increase the highlight if you look on the layer marks here it is currently white which means the highlights are visible let us make them invisible by selecting the marks and pressing ctrl plus i now the layer marks is set to black let us now make sure that the foreground color is set to white because when you paint with white you reveal the details now i'll grab a soft round brush increase the size and set the opacity to 100 percent and adjust the flow 36 percent is okay so i'll just zoom inside here and then gradually begin to paint here with the soft round brush to add the highlights Now let's also add the shadows. I'll click here and choose curves adjust way. I'll click on the target icon here. Click on any portion of the image and simply drag down to reduce the brightness which will in turn increase the shadows. This looks good. Again with the mark selected, I'll press Ctrl plus I to invert it. Then with the soft round brush, I'll gradually begin to paint on those portions with white set as foreground to reveal the shadows. Now, I only want the highlights and shadows. By the way, let's rename this to shadows. I only want the shadows and highlights to affect everything within this group. So, with the highlights selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key and clip it, and also clip the shadows. Let us see the before and after with the shadows and highlights applied. This is the image without the shadows and highlights. And this is it with the shadows and highlights applied. It makes a whole lot of sense and it also adds the depth to the face and body. Now let us create a stand visible layer of everything we see on the screen. To create a stand visible layer, press Ctrl Alt Shift E. That's Command Option Shift E on the map. And then I'll put the shadows and highlights into one new group. And then I'll rename this layer to Final. The next thing I want us to do is to make the eyes pop. And that is the reason we created a stand visible layer because you cannot use the traditional touch tool inside Photoshop on top of stack layers. So with the stand visible layer selected, I'm going to grab the touch tool from here. I'll make sure mid tones is set as the range and exposure is 50%. I'll zoom into the eyes and then gradually begin to dodge them. Now let us see the before and after. Here's the before without the dodging and here's the after with the dodging applied. The eyes look more focused now. I will hide the retouch group here and the next thing we need to do now is to add some texture to the whole retouching image. Before adding any texture, what I usually do is that I consider the size of the textures that the original image has, okay? So as you can see, the texture here is not that big. We have just tiny grains here so let's take this into consideration then the next thing i always consider is also the light source the light source comes from this angle so we'll also replicate this angle inside photoshop to add the texture i'll start by creating an empty layer above here i'll just click on the plus sign here then i'll rename this layer to texture then with the texture layer selected i'll go to edit and then i'll choose view and inside here 
I'll make sure that 50% gray is selected. Then I'll change the blending mode from whatever blending mode it is to normal. Then opacity is set to 100%. I'll make sure preserve transparency is not checked. Then I'll click OK. Then I'm going to convert this layer into a smart object. Because the texture layer sits above everything, it covers the final image we are currently working on. To reveal the image below it, let us change its blending mode to overlay. Then let us go to filter and then let's add camera row filter. When the camera row window opens up, you have this plus sign on the screen. You can click to zoom in and also click to zoom out. Now let's go here on the right and expand the effects. We currently have grain and vignetting. Come to the little arrow beside here and click on it. By clicking, you will be able to see the size and roughness which we are going to use to create that texture. I will just click here once to zoom in and then I will increase the grain. As I increase the grain, you see the effect here on the screen. So let's just reduce the size like so. And with the roughness, if you reduce it down to zero, it produces this sharp effect as you can see. Let's gradually begin to increase the roughness to make the whole effect smoother. I think I like how the texture looks right now, so I'll just click OK. The good thing is, because we converted this layer into a smart object, we can always double click on camera raw filter and we will be taken back into camera raw where we can be able to modify the values as you can see from here. Currently, if I zoom into the image and toggle the eye icon here, you can see the before and after. But right now, the green effect is not very realistic. Now, let us go to filter and then let's add Gaussian blur. I will take it down to 0.1. The reason I'm adding Gaussian blur here is to make sure that the camera raw filter we have here has the soft look. I'll gradually begin to increase the radius to have the soft look that I want. I think in this particular image, let's leave it at 0.5 and click OK. Now let us go again to filter and then let's choose stylize and let's add emboss. A moment ago, I said that we also need to make sure that we understand the angle of the lightning, okay? So in this particular image, the light comes from the top right, as you can see. So I'm going to also make sure I replicate that angle here. There is no need to do some guesswork by guessing which value enters here. So you can just click in this circle and you can be able to move this clock hand around just like so, as you can see. I will just move it towards the direction of the lightning in my image, towards 47 degrees and I'll leave it there. By rotating this angle, it also rotates the, the green effect that we applied in camera row to match that particular angle to make things more realistic. Now I can increase the height and also adjust the amount. If you reduce the amount, it will be like nothing happened. So let's gradually increase the amount to a nice value that will actually work in our image. Alright, after playing with these values, I came with an angle of 47 degrees, a height of 74 pixels, and amount of 87%. I'll just click OK. We can always come back and adjust those values if need be. Now, if I double the texture layer here, you can see the texture being applied so nicely. The problem with this texture layer is that it appears everywhere on the image, okay? But I want to selectively add the texture on those portions I think that it is necessary. To do that, let us add an inverted max to this layer instantly. Hold the ALT key, that will be the option key on the mark and click on the camera icon here. That is going to add an inverted max. Now with the max selected, switch to the brush tool. Then make sure you have a soft raw brush and then you can play with the flow and opacity and then gradually begin to reveal the textures on those portions which you think are necessary. Now I'm going to put this inside the group and rename it to final. And that is it for our retouching guys. Let's see what we have done so far. So this is how the image looked from the beginning. We took some time to heal the image and then add the dimension to the face as I explained with the shadows and highlights. And in the end, we achieved this effect also adding the hue saturation layer. Then after that, we added the final version here with the texture. 
to produce this effect and also dodge and burn the eyes as you can see. Hopefully you have learned something in this video and if you have actually understood this process then I think that you can be able to modify or retouch any photo that is given to you perfectly. So thank you so much for watching and please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. If you subscribe I will be motivated to create more videos just like this. See you in the next one tomorrow. Bye bye.